Welcome to Foundations TV, everyone. Our guest today is very, very special. He's a world-renowned musician, actually a Grammy nominee as well. He's a pianist, he plays a lot of different instruments, and he is also a music director. He has been a music director for American Idol, and he's also looking forward to something similar coming up next year. The one and only John Beasley on Foundations TV today. Welcome to Foundations TV, John. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Very nice to have you here. It's such a pleasure. Thanks for your time. And now going straight to our first question. Tell us something about your journey as a musician. When did you uh, know that you're going to be a pianist? Oh, well, to be a pianist, um, maybe I was 14 years old. Uh -huh. uh, but my, um, I started playing music at a very early age because my, my mom and dad were mus are musicians and music educators and my grandfather was a musician a music educator so there was just music everywhere when i was growing up so um so you knew that you are going to be a musician i kind of was playing yeah being a musician from a very early age Wonderful. um but um you know i was a normal kid you know i was in the sports and, and other things and it finally kind of hit me um uh, maybe i was 13 or 14 years old uh, when I decided I was in a rock band, and, you know, and then I heard jazz. Yeah. And um, my parents made me take piano lessons. I I didn't really like it. Okay. You know, at first, you know, I didn't like to do it. Yeah. I liked it okay, but yeah. I was playing oboe and drums, and um, but they made me. They, they wanted me to have a foundation of pianos for some reason. Yeah. And then um, the girl quit that was in the band, and I was playing guitar, and I was not very good. And um, uh, she quit, and something dawned to me that, well, I'm taking all these piano lessons. Let me try to play over here. So I got into playing R&B and, and playing jazz music at that point and trying to be a arranger. I've never stopped since. Great. So what was your first official step into this journey of being a musician? Like uh, a formal presentation? Or what was your first, or was it a formal education you got for music? I was just... Being around the house as a three or two or two or three year old and hearing my parents practice at home, nice. and they would they would give lessons at home. Yeah, and I, I would hear them giving lessons, and and then I would go to them to their jobs. You know, they they play at night, or they at one point they were both playing with the Shreveport um, Symphony and Opera. Yeah, so go to rehearsals with them because you know they couldn't afford a babysitter. And, you know, I would just. I was around it. It was part of my environment. Excellent, excellent. So you do play a lot of different instruments and you have a lot of different accomplishments in your name as well, including a Grammy nomination. Uh, but what I want to know is what is most special to you as an accomplishment in your life? Well, well I guess maybe <laughs> how my daughter turned out, you know, oh, raising... Oh, how sweet. You know, that, that's a good, that's like an accomplishment. Yeah. I think I think as parents, we should all... Yes, take pride in that, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Tell us uh, something about your daughter. Yeah. So, um, other than that, um, I mean, playing with Miles Davis was a dream come true. Yeah. Um, um, being able to record my own music and then have it recognized as a, as a Grammy nomination was a, wow. was a high point. Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, and then you know, just on a on a on, a, on the most um, real level, is being able to touch people with music on a nightly basis, yeah. be able to 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 to, to uh, travel the world and meet different people, different cultures, and be able to perform for them. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a that's a rare. Uh, that's a rare treat and a rare, um, uh, a lot of people 
don't have that. So I feel very uh, grateful. Yes, yes. And I, I watched, personally, I watched your performance with other people that where you just spoke of cultures and different kinds of instruments and, you know, traveling around. And I, I watched that performance and that was absolutely phenomenal. It definitely touched many, many people that night. Uh, so it was beautiful. It was beautiful. That was definitely a, 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 a you know, a, a fusion of, of culture, you know, yes. because uh, yes. I was playing Thelonious Monk and playing my jazz style, right. along with Pintia, who was playing, you know, his uh, any classical music on yeah. tabla, yeah. and Max playing uh, the dulcimer. It was, a, it was a different thing, yeah, it was, it was a nice concert. Beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, so as a composer, of course, you compose your own music. So as a composer, uh, what inspires you? What keeps you, you know, gives you ideas and just kind of gets you going, thinking about music? Um, well, it kind of happened anywhere. Yeah. Anytime, sometimes, you know. Really? Uh, I like going to museums. Mm -hmm. I like visual stimulation. Beautiful. You know? Um, A lot of times it's it's physical. It's, it's taking a walk, you know, and, and, and letting your mind kind of drift, and then I'll hear a rhythm or a, yeah, or a, uh, it just comes to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course there's deadlines that are great. Yeah, for, uh, that was my next. Qu I was leading to you know, I, kind of leading to that. Uh, you know, how do you manage with deadlines? Because uh, composing is, is such a creative uh, way of working, and you know, it has to just come to you. So how do you work with? boundaries where you have set requirements and timelines and I think as as time goes on the more you compose the more you're able to tap into it really? whenever you need to yeah um and yeah there's 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 a great thing when it just comes that's that's great but sometimes you know you have these deadlines and and you and you have to you have to kind of be able to turn it on and tap into it when you need to um I also think deadlines and parameters, like uh, artistic parameters, are a great a great way to to, uh, to they're a great spawn spawning grounds for creativity. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a you know you know you have to kind of write in this style with this person, um, maybe not too harmonically com complex or more commercial, then you. And to be creative within the, those parameters is yeah. a real, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing, you know, it, 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 to be, it's kind of funny, you know, you, you tend to think that artists just want to be able to do whatever they want yeah. at a time, yeah. but a lot of times the parameters they or help. the fence you build around you. itself helps you good. Okay. build something within that, that arena, you know. That's, that's definitely, I think, a useful bit of information for a lot of artists out there who who currently are, you know, working in, in an uncontrolled environment or unset yeah. environment and, and are kind of afraid to step into a zone where they might have to live with some restrictions or some parameters, as you said. But this is great to know that, you know, uh, it's something that would actually guide them and help them in the future as well. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Sure. I mean, you know, like an artist, you know, that maybe... Uh, uh, he tries to, art, to to paint something with just the primary colors. Right. You know, that would be a great exercise. You know, mm. a great Picasso with pri primary colors. You know. Wow. I'd like to see that. Yeah. 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 So besides music, you have other art interests as well. Into art. Sure. Yeah. You know, I love great movies. Uh, uh, um, I'm studying Buddhism at the moment, oh, so I'm reading nice. a lot. Nice. Nichiren and uh, and uh, Thich Nhat Han. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm reading a little bit about that. I'm um, I study yoga. I practice yoga. Yeah. Um, but mostly lately, I've been I've been playing music. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So going forward, where, where are you headed with this music now? Are you do you have any dreams that you're very close to accomplishing, or you wish some sort of a wish that you have that you want to be in? A place? Yeah, this year um, I put together a big band mm -hmm. uh, called Monkestra. Okay. And we play the mu music of Thelonious Monk. But uh, in, in, my, uh, in my, my creative input towards it, so I'm writing up arrangements and putting them 
putting a band together and orchestrating and um so I'm hoping to do a record. That's my focus, is to do a record and to, to tour more with that band. Um, and then um, I'm also a, uh, a teacher at the Rotterdam Conservatory in Holland. So I'll be doing um, some master classes there next year. Excellent. Uh, they're really interested in, in fusing world, all the world's music together, mm -hmm. you know, which to me, that's really what jazz is. is yeah. You know, we've kind of stolen from all the rhythms and all the harmonies from all the world and made, made it an American art form, you know, yeah. what we do, and improvise off of it. So now it's kind of coming full circle. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some concerts there Excellent. with the faculty. You know. Excellent. Excellent. And then um, I also work as, a, as an arranger and, a, and, a, and a, as an associate music director for American Idol. Yes, yeah. so that's, that's I'll be, amazing. Uh, we start that season in February. Oh, wow. So, so that's something you do regularly with all every single season, or are you involved with American? Well, I did it. I did it from. Uh, I did it for about five or six years, until the last three years. Okay. And we didn't do it uh, for those three years, and okay. then uh, the production company I'm with has gotten hired back. So Excellent. now we're starting up again. That is exciting. Yeah. That is absolutely exciting. So if I were to ask you, uh, you know, one last question for our viewers, what's your inspirational message for them and what is your, you know, so to speak, your philosophy of life that, that keeps you motivated and interested? Well, I mean, to play music yeah. is really about people you're playing for and it's about communicating to other people and touching them and, and or, or giving them some kind of solace. And and kind of respite from their from their from their everyday lives, yeah. be able to take them away, yeah. and also to get them to think about things, you know, maybe in a new viewpoint, you know. So um, I've been working hard to, to to not play some so much self ego music. You know, to where, oh yeah, I have to, I have to play this good. I have to do this. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. How do I sound? How do I sound? You know, that's really not it. You, 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 you create, you practice, and you create techniques for yourself, and so that you can express yourself. Mm -hmm. So you tell the story, mm -hmm. so that you can move another human being. Yeah. It's not about me anymore. Yeah. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to work on. Yeah. Not only with music in my life, but you know, my, uh, my attitude toward my family and my friends and my fellow man, you know. So yeah. uh, I think Buddhism, Buddhism has, has really taught me that and uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to live that. I'm trying to live that. Excellent, excellent. That's, that's a beautiful message. It's, it's, it's uh, something that will touch souls, I'm sure, you know. Uh, and that's what music is all about, touching various souls. So. Right. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, John. Thanks so much for your time today, and thanks for being at Foundations TV. My pleasure. It was nice meeting you last week. I had a great yes, time. Yes, yes, it was wonderful to meet you. Definitely.